In this video, I aim to assist you with your Skyrim modding by sharing my personal modding experiences and introducing a variety of the latest mods. First and foremost, I'd like to introduce you to the Archwood. Although I introduced this mod on this channel a long time ago, I have now officially added it to my mod list. Through this mod, I was able to transform the Riverwood and Falkreath areas into unique landscapes. This mod adds lush trees and moss-like plants to the Riverwood and Falkreath areas, making them look like tropical rainforests. You can also find purple bamboo and plants reminiscent of poisonous herbs scattered throughout. The dense and tall trees upgrade the entire Falkreath area to a whole new dimension. I applied this mod yesterday and was truly amazed by the stunning natural environment it created. I hope you find it helpful as well. Additionally, I upgraded the dodge and jump mechanics using the DMCO AMR Butterfly Dodge mod. This mod applies the butterfly effect from Alice Madness Returns to Skyrim's dodge. You can toggle the effect on and off by reading a book within the mod to learn the spell, and you can customize the color and dodge type through the MCM. The animation uses Smooth's vampire dodge motion, and if you can add annotations, you can apply this effect to various actions like jumping, not just dodging. This offers an opportunity to enhance motion effects with a variety of butterfly colors. Next up is Somewhere in Between. This mod was introduced on this channel a long time ago, and it has been consistently updated since then, becoming a highly polished mod. This mod replaces Skyrim's armors and outfits with 3BA versions, beautifully redesigning most of the female armors and outfits, while also providing 3BA body slide support. Notably, the fur armor set, commonly worn by bandits, has been upgraded with various fur decorations and a more unique design. Additionally, the blacksmith set has been modified, among many other elements. This mod enhances the overall design while maintaining the vanilla lore friendliness, allowing you to enjoy looting outfits from enemies even more. Next up is Ducks and Swans 2. This mod adds ducks and swans to the lakes and ponds of Skyrim. It is an improved version of the original Ducks and Swans mod created by Tamira, featuring new models and textures to bring cuter ducks and swans into the game. The ducks and swans move across the water with animations that make them look like real animals. They also make their respective sounds, enhancing the atmosphere as players walk around the lakes. I think it's a pretty cool mod, but it hasn't been used by many players. That's why I wanted to introduce it to you, and I also plan to use this mod to enhance the lakes and ponds in my Skyrim game. Next up is the Forest Fragments Forest Debris Expansion. This mod adds various debris to the forests of Skyrim. It is a derivative version of Nature of the Wildlands, adding only fragments and plants independently. Therefore, users who already use Nature of the Wildlands won't need this mod. However, for those using other tree mods besides Nature of the Wildlands, forest fragments can add a variety of fragments and plant debris. I also use this mod to upgrade the vibrancy of the forests in Skyrim, along with the Archwood, Ulvenwald, and Jedi, which I mentioned earlier. Through the Witcher, Clutters in Skyrim mod, I was able to enhance the field significantly. This mod adds various elements from Witcher 3 to Skyrim. Notably, Witcher 3 elements are frequently seen near Solitude, and statues and wooden decorations are added around Whiterun and Dragonbridge. Additionally, a tree-like monster is introduced in the Falkreath area, which is quite well designed. I thought it would be great if more of these creatures were arranged throughout the game. This mod would be especially appealing to fans of Witcher 3. Next up is Half-Face's Whiterun Shields mod which transforms the Whiterun Shields decorations commonly seen in the city into something more visually appealing. The blue and yellow colors are well balanced, and you can spot these shield decorations not only within Whiterun, but also occasionally while walking around if you use Lux Via. It's a small but impressive mod. Since it's an ESP-free mod, you can install it anytime during your gameplay. Next up is the combination of the Infinity Dodge and DMCO Dark Soul Sound Replacer mods. This is a well-known mod combination among enthusiasts, 
It involves replacing the dodge motion from D-Star's DMCO with the Infinity Dodge motion, and adding the Dark Soul sound replacer to include armor sounds during dodging. DMCO's original rolling animation can be a bit excessive, but a low jump height. However, this combination retains all the features of DMCO's 8-direction dodge, while improving the motion with Infinity Dodge, and enhancing the sound with Dark Soul Sound Replacer. This creates a comprehensive dodge mod setup that I highly recommend to many viewers. I have also applied this combination myself, and I'm excited to introduce it to you. Next up is the Vanilla Outfit Replacer by Creator Icy. This mod changes a total of 11 vanilla outfits as shown in the video. It enhances the female body line and provides 3BA body slide support. It is one of the few vanilla outfit replacers available. Apart from the fact that the outfits look like they were cut with a ruler, it's a fairly decent mod. I was hesitant to use this mod at first, but I decided to give it a try because I wanted to change the existing vanilla outfits. Although the outfits are changed to a somewhat tights-like appearance, which slightly reduces immersion, I recommend this mod to those who, like me, want to see prettier outfits and NPCs in the game. Next up is the Squad Set Follower Home mod. Splendid. This mod allows you to set a home for your followers in Skyrim. With this mod, you can send your followers to a new home when you dismiss them. The new home can be any location, including custom player homes. How can I Followers will that? roam, eat, sleep, and use furniture and tools there. This mod supports up to 50 followers, so you of no course. longer need to travel long distances to meet your followers after dismissing them. Additionally, through the MCM, you can blacklist specific followers who already have home setting logic applied, and you can set different homes for each follower. It's this mod invites day. followers to your home, making it more convenient to meet them. If you want to enjoy more convenient adventures with your followers in Skyrim, give this mod a try. Bye. Next up is the Object Manipulation Overhaul. Although I have introduced this mod before, it is extremely important and essential, so I am presenting it again. This mod allows you to change the position of most objects. Not only can you move objects, but you can also rotate them, and the key values can be set through a JSON file. In my case, when I encounter trees floating above the ground or overlapping with houses in the field, I use this mod to fix it myself. I used to get quite stressed whenever I saw various objects, including trees, improperly placed. However, with this mod, I can resolve these issues on my own, making it incredibly useful. If you share the same thoughts, I highly recommend trying out this mod. Next up is the combination of the Skyrim Hunter Series 1 hand and For Honor in Skyrim mods. Firstly, the Hunter Series 1 hand moveset features attack animations that blend shield and one-handed sword movements seamlessly. If you've played Monster Hunter games, you'll recognize the familiar one-handed sword motions. Thanks to the creator's excellent conversion, the attack frames are quite smooth. The basic attack uses a one-handed sword, but if you press the forward movement key and power attack simultaneously, your character will attack three times with the shield. If you then press the power attack while moving backward, your character will jump and strike down with the sword. Following this, pressing the normal attack key will make your character leap into the air, and pressing the power attack again will result in a shield bash from mid-air. Additionally, for the sprint attack, the mod uses Smooth's animations. For normal attacks, it uses Conqueror's animations. And for power attacks, it uses Warlord's animations. Applying these is quite simple. First, install the Skyrim Hunter series one-hand mod and open the numbered folder in the following path. Then, place the Sprint Attack HKX file from the Warlord motion into the Hunter series one-hand folder and rename it by adding power between Sprint and Attack. After that, place the Sprint Attack HKX file from the Conqueror motion into the Hunter Series 1 hand folder. By combining these, you can use For Honor's Sprint Attack while using the Hunter Series 1 hand animations for other attacks. That concludes my personal experiences, insights, and mod combinations to enhance your Skyrim mod list. 
Although my knowledge may be limited, I hope it helps you enjoy a more exciting Skyrim experience. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe, like, and turn on notifications. I'll be back with even better videos next time. Enjoy your Skyrim adventures.